It's the Daily Doug. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Doug. Thanks for being with me today. Y'all, it's a Monday. You know what happens on Mondays. It's the beginning of a work week, and we got to get things going. It's a Metal Monday today, and just like last week, I am going to be making today's Metal Monday a supersized edition. We're going to be listening to the entire side of a classic album, and today I'm going back to Van Halen to complete their debut self-titled album and I'm happy that you're along for the ride. I started this journey uh, into Van Halen's early work more than a year ago with episode 567. That was in April of 2023, and in that video I heard Eruption, and you really got me, and I very much enjoyed that. The guitar work, you know, unbelievable stuff, right? So I later returned to finish side one, in episode 733, that was this past February, and we heard Running With The Devil, Ain't Talking About Love, and I'm The One. And I decided then, I really do need to get to side two. And it's been a few months, so today it's time. We're going to finish this uh, self-titled debut album by listening to all of the songs on side two. And as I was preparing my notes here, I realize that I really don't know any of these songs. Jamie's Crying was a single release, and I kind of remember uh, Jamie's Crying, that, just that little motive in uh, what I guess is the chorus, and that's all that I really remember from that. And the rest of the songs, the titles don't spur any musical memories for me, so I'm really pumped to hear them with all of you. As a uh, refresher, this album was released in 1978, and uh, soon after its release, uh, the fans of rock and metal really began to take notice of this band. Uh, the, the album was very successful. It got a little bit of a slow start, I think, in sales, but it's really sold a ton. And uh, during that same time, they were winning over fans at their concerts. Uh, as well. They were opening both for Journey and Black Sabbath during this era of the band. And as they went into the studio, they did not have a ton of material, and they basically played their set live with minimal overdubs and the uh, relatively short recording at only 35 minutes is what became their debut album. And there you go, y'all. History is made. We got Van Halen. Uh, and uh, they would go on to do pretty darn well, right? So we got David Lee Roth on lead vocals. He is also on the acoustic guitar in one of the tunes. Uh, Eddie Van Halen is on guitar and backing vocals. Michael Anthony is on the bass and backing vocals. And Alex Van Halen is on the drums. I've got this set to go all the way through the side without stopping, y'all. We're going to just hang out like we're listening to a side of vinyl uh, up in our room on a weekend evening, <laughs> you know? So uh, grab a drink, gr grab a snack, and let's see what we've got here. Uh, let's start off with Jamie's Crying. It's the first song on side two from Van Halen's debut album. Off we go. Right into it. I think they're tuned down. It's now or never, y'all. That's all I know. That's it. Oh, 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 I mean, it's now got kind of a 50s throwback uh, melody to it. But it's in this heavy so metal context, goodbye. right? Sometimes.
knows that love should mean a little more than a one night stand. So now she's crying for more uh, reasons than one. <laughs> Right, goes to the four chord, and we get a different bit of hi-hat work from Alex. little hook to uh, set up the outro. And they're just a great foursome, aren't they? Michael's high harmonies really add a lot of color here to the tune. Great way to start off. And that's going to fade out. The next song up on the album is called Atomic Punk. And I don't know anything about this. Is it a punk song? I'm not sure. We'll see. <laughs> What is he doing that? There's like no... Okay. They're in the same key as before. They're still in E flat. They're tuned down. Nobody rules these streets at night but me, the atomic punk. Hey, Dave. Michael's bass is so good and sturdy for oh, here. Yes. Nobody rules these streets at night but me, the atomic bump. He's got his own rhythm throughout this, through part, that first part of the... How is he doing that? He almost makes the guitar a, uh, an, an instrument of indefinite pitch. There was no pitch in that. He was just kind of just using it in a really interesting way. I notice Dave's alone on his vocals in this. A lot of times they're singing harmony. That's a way to end a song. Boom. Yeah, flat two to one. Woo! This one's called Feel Your Love Tonight. I'm enjoying this. And it's, again, the same key. Do you hear it? A flat. Back to one. And 
major. So it's a simple rock song lyric, y'all. It's the story of a hookup. I can't wait to feel your love tonight. He's buttering her up too. You're the prettiest girl I know. But use it up before it gets old. I tell you, honey, don't you No, 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 no. I'm a That's flat six. By midnight, he's going to be flying high. It's a date. Great music. It's got that rock and roll sensibility and metal sensibility. But they're almost like writing throwback rock songs. It sounds like the early 50s. Right? Just updated with the power of metal. There's a solo. The four. For the six. There's flat six. Flat seven. It's the backing vocals that really sets them apart from their contemporaries. It's their special sound. Cool. I loved that one. That was a groovy tune. The vinyl's still going, so I gotta keep up, y'all. And this song, this next one, is called Little Dreamer. Finally in a different key. Minor five. Let me talk about your cold when you walk. It is for the skies. But you were young and bold, and baby, didn't that change with a wink of your eyes? Now no one's so that's a B down to F sharp. And then they do the same thing. No one talks about that. Down to E, it's a sequential pattern. Short choruses. I mean, the chorus in the last song was just saying, I can't wait to feel your love tonight. Ooh. This one is just, ooh, little dreamer. Ooh, little dreamer. That works.
listen to all three of them. Bass, drums, lead guitar. Yeah, they talk about you cold when you were headed for the skies. But you were young and bold. Everything so far here has got a really great groove to it. Just a great rock and roll vibe. there okay the next one's a song called ice cream man i gotta hear this dedicate one to the lady dave is on the Sometimes acoustic guitar here to keep you cool. we're right into it dave i know summertime's your baby needs something to keep you cool better look out now though dave's got something for you a blues tune I'm your ice cream man. About the ass ice cream man. When I'm passing by. Oh my my, I'm your ice cream man. Stop me when I'm passing by. To see now all my flavors are guaranteed to satisfy. And they're still tuned down. That's in your flat again. I got put my banana Dixie cups. All flavors and push ups too. I'm your ice cream man, baby. Stop me when I'm passing by. See, now all my flavors, all are, my guaranteed flavors are guaranteed to satisfy. I think we got a little well, bit of dessert flavored uh, innuendo here. I never stop, I usually pass them by just around 11 o'clock. I love the and acoustic cool nature of this, it gives time, us a chance to kind of breathe a little bit all right, boys. and have some fun. All my flavors. I'm your ice cream man. Stop me when I'm passing by. I'm your ice cream man. Stop me when I'm passing by. This is actually a cover I read. It's a blues song by a guy named John Grimm. Check it. It's not a prototypical blues uh, <laughs> solo, but I'll take it. That was cool. Song. Is this a song that he plays from the ice cream truck to get all the, the, the ladies to come and sample some of his flavors? It's a blues tune, but I'm having a whale of a time. Damn right, Dave. Again, it's like a 50s throwback. It really is a 50s throwback that they've updated and brought right into their sound. We got one more, y'all. It's called On Fire. I'm enjoying the crap out of myself. Oh, 
There's still an E flat. I think all of these songs except for one. One was in B. The rest have been in E flat. Step to F. Somebody help Dave out, he's on fire. I read that this is one of the band's earliest original songs and was included in their early demos. The doors eat your heart out. They're screaming about fire. Just great arrangements for these songs. Hang on, Dave. I know you're on fire. We'll get you. We'll get you taken care of. Interesting choices for these little breaks to give us some really interesting sounds. Got my headphones on. That's a move up to have bass. You can tell, y'all, by just the the whites of my eyes that all of that was brand new to me. I can't believe that I've never heard those classic songs before. Um, <clears throat> I know I say that a lot on the channel, but it's still after doing this for for three plus years. Um, specifically, you know, it's amazing how much music there still is out there that I haven't gotten to. Um, that was a fun, fun listen to that side of that album. The whole album has got great, great tunes. The thing that's interesting to me is that the rock and roll itself, like the, uh, the blueprints of the songs from, from the basic riffs to the, to the melodies, to, uh, the, the way that the chords are, are working reminds me of earlier rock and roll. It reminds me of an earlier time but it's updated into the rock and roll of the day and the metal movement of that decade in the 70s, by now the late 70s, that they're putting this in. And it gives a really interesting color to what they're doing. They've got a, a really intense drummer. Alex's drumming doesn't get enough uh, recognition, I believe. And... Uh, obviously, I'm mesmerized by Eddie's guitar work, but it's his choices in how he solos that also brings a ton of color into what he's doing, and it makes you listen. It really, really does. Uh, we shouldn't discount Michael's bass playing. How great was that? And his high harmonies that he's adding in there with Dave. It really gives, and I think Eddie's doing some some backing vocals as well, but it gives their sound a uniqueness that uh, nobody else had, uh, especially in the metal genre with those great, um, like multiple person, uh, anthemic singing, you know, in, in harmony there. That was really, really cool. Uh, David Lee Roth then provides the show, uh, and is out front doing his thing. He's a dynamic performer, a dynamic singer, uh, and I respect his presence and his dynamism as a performer. 
I've heard, I think, more from the Sammy Hagar era of the band than I have uh, David Lee Roth's time with the band, especially like these these early albums. And as I'm looking at uh, Van Halen 2, the next album at the track list, I don't think I see anything from that album that jumps out as me as something that I know or even know well at all. So we're going to do this again. I'm sure at some point in the future, we'll get to Van Halen 2 and we'll continue on. And I got to learn the, this music, y'all. It's just infectious and it's got a great vibe. And I just love what they are up to. And so apparently so do a ton of other people because uh, it's on many best of lists. Uh, the critics and, um, and music fans alike have uh, put this song in the pantheon of some of the great albums of all time, especially heavy metal albums. And it's their debut offering. So right off the bat, they, uh, they are right in our faces and demanding attention. And uh, I had a great time listening to that, y'all. This was fun. Uh, I will be back with some more Van Halen at some point in the future. I think I'll start uh, the next one with uh, Van Halen 2 and keep going where I am. But that's going to be all for today, my friends. I thank you for being with me, and we'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug. <laughs>